This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Every person has an addictive tendency towards an object or an activity. One can be addicted to exercise, food, or even shopping. Just like 24-year-old Anne Soteco, a self-confessed shopaholic. Walang limit yung pagbili ko ng clothes and dresses. So, walang limit yung budget ko. Minsan kahit hindi na pasok sa budget, binibili ko pa rin. Basta nag-stock. Marami akong gamit na nakastock lang sa cabinet. Minsan, um, two or three times ko lang siya nagamit. Tapos hindi ko na ulit siya magagamit after noon. Anne admits that her addiction to shopping has caused her some problems. Meron time na hindi na ako makapasok dahil hindi ko alam na hindi na siya pasok sa budget ko. So, what I'll be doing is, uutang mo na ako sa parents ko or sa friends ng pambahon and then babayaran ko na ng susunod. Pero pag binayaran ko, syempre, hindi ko pa rin mapipigilin na sa susunod na sweldo, mag-shop ulit ako. Addiction is defined as a recurring compulsion by an individual to engage in some specific activity despite harmful consequences. Yung addiction is uh, meron kang bagay na gustong-gusto mong ginagawa pa ulit-ulit. No? na it already interferes with normal life. Kasi may mga tao naman na uh, susubok, hindi naman nagiging addict. No? Kasi wala silang genes. Hindi sila predisposed. No? But if you already have that predisposition, ikaw yung always at risk ka na kapag sumubok ka, mahuhok ka doon. Drug and alcohol addiction are known to be harmful to one's health, mental state, and social life. He spend the waking hours niya to look for the substance or to do that activity. So the other activities niya will only take second ano, priority. Mauuna yon. So that's when you say addicted ka na talaga. What are the other forms of addiction? What are the signs and symptoms to watch out for when one is already suffering from this condition? Are there specific treatments to each addiction? All these and more tonight on MedTalk. Addiction is a serious problem and it needs medical attention. So to help us understand more about this condition, we have with us tonight Dr. Estrella Tiongson Magno, clinical psychologist. Also joining us is Dr. Henwina Ranoy, child and adult psychiatrist from the Medical City and Mood Clinic consultant from the St. Luke's Medical Center. You can participate in the discussion by following us on Twitter. You can also post on our Facebook page or send us an email. Good evening, doctors. Welcome to the show. Good Hi, evening. Angel. Hi. The basic pleasure of wanting things or engaging in certain types of activities which is uh, within our control is acceptable. But when does this become destructive or when does it become unmanageable? Unmanageable when you are <laughs> too dependent on whatever makes you happy or whatever makes you safe or whatever you uh, want to get more of, you know. And it, your question, how does it become Im Im um, unmanageable, unmanageable or destructive? Yes, and then so you indulge in this and then after a while you feel the compulsion to do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a problem because then relationships suffer, your job suffers, social life suffers, everything suffers and you know you have a problem. A problem. Is this uh, the problem that is... It, but it, it grows within time. It's a gradual Oh, yes. Problem. Because after a while, you build up this uh, resist, this uh, 
um, what do you call it, doctor? You, parang well, it, if this the you if you develop the compulsion, can't sleep anymore. Oh, oh, you, you can't it, function. You become insatiable. You know, you have to do it over and over again, or else increase the dosage more and more, or. Uh, just get stuff more and more, buy more and more, or go to the casino more and more, and you then end up with pathological gambling or addiction to gambling. Wow. Okay. So when you get engaged in these activities, that initially these are actually things that you need to do, but when you get, uh, get engaged too much and it's creating distress mm -hmm. to your activities, then it's it becomes a problem. Okay. But if it gives you the things that you want from these activities, that's fine. If you're having fun, you're, you're exercising, even exercise actually, you can have addiction to exercise, eating, that's fine because it gives you that energy. But the thing is, if you are using these things as a self-medication for something, for emotional disturbances, then it is a problem. So this is addiction and the causes of our addiction are uh, like what you mentioned addiction when you say addiction okay there has to be components that we see in addiction there has to be dependency okay you go to a large extent to look for this substance if it is a substance or if it is an activity you go to a large extent to get these things okay and there's tolerance tolerance is initially you get the high Okay, you are so happy. You were so euphoric in the first, second use. On the third use, you notice that you didn't have that high that you first achieved on the first use. And that's the reason you keep on doing it, to achieve the first high that you experience. Or but you the thing the is, dosage. you never get it. So you increase the dosage, you increase the intensity, you increase the amount, you increase the frequency of using it. Is this a medical condition? Is it an illness? Now we are yes. we are oh. we are con we are actually seeing it as a yes. medical condition. It could be a substance abuse disorder, etc. So yes, it is a disorder mm -hmm. because you know the person is out of control, and the health suffers, the family life suffers. So everything goes beyond control. So it is uh, what they call it self destructive. Yes. So it is a medical condition, yes. Doctor Rano, oh. because. There is also a physiological um, processes yes. no, that are involved. There are neurotransmitters that are involved in your brain. There are a lot of okay. structures that are involved in your brain to achieve all these symptoms, you know, to achieve all this euphoria, this mood that you get when you are using substances or we are, when you are engaging in these activities that are addictive. Mm -hmm. you know. There are changes in your brains, you know, in your brain. Okay? So there are molecular structures that are changed mm -hmm. now when you get engaged in these activities and when you use these substances. They are called psychoactive substances because they exert a lot of influence on certain areas of your brain. And if you use it to a large extent, you don't go back to its former state. Unless you get help. Unless you get help, mm -hmm. and even if you get help, no? You give medications, you give biological interventions. Again, if it's too late, then you don't go back to its former state. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to catch it at a later stage. That's We'd right. like to catch it onset. For us abusers who are addicted to any of this substance or the lifestyle addic uh, addiction, uh, all of them would say, I can control this. All of them, not, not one of them would say, I cannot I control. That's what we call omnipotent control. Mm -hmm. I can do this. I am the boss. <laughs> so the more you say it, the more you think it. Yes. And the more you do it, but actually it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I know but what I'm doing. Anytime I want to stop, I can stop. Mm -hmm. But they can't. And they exactly. think they're in control. But we'll go back to that in a little while. We just have to answer our Twitter question, doctors. With the technology advancement, is there really an internet addict? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> we, yes, go ahead, doctor. Okay, internet addiction. Internet addiction, now it is classified as impulse control yes. disorder. But 
were going to come out, the Amer American Psychiatric Association would come out with this DSM-5 where all the psychiatric conditions are classified and described. And it's coming out this May, and um, we still don't know what it contains, Dr. So, so, how, so how does one, uh, is still waiting for the answers as to what it contains, yes, to uh -huh. be classified as an internet addict? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's all under the uh, heading impulse control disorder. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Because they cannot control anymore. They're out of control. Mm -hmm. yes. They're forever <laughs> on the internet searching for yes. whatever, anything. Sleepless. Sleeping oh, in front of the computer oh, probably oh, even. Oh, oh. 24 that, 7. Oh, they, they can do that. They can do that. 24, 24 they, hours straight. They think they're in control no, of it. Yes. yes. Oh. No eating, no, no eating. sleeping. Oh. They don't go oh. to the bathroom. No Does friends. this choose any age? No. You can start as early as 7 years old. And go all the way up to. All the way. Yeah. Some people More are very mature proud ages. At, at age four. Mm -hmm. They're very adept at their computers. And now technology, oh, oh. Um, you know, you, we see all the children uh, with. A gadget. It's their toy. It's their toy. It's yes. a way to appease them when they cry. Yes. It's a uh -huh. way to, um, you know, when the parent is talking to someone else so that mm -hmm. the child does not, uh -huh. you know, interrupt maybe. Yes. I think it's a question of balancing. You have this gadget. Should I allow my child to have it 24 hours a day and he should be the one in control? Mm -hmm. Or whenever he wants to use it, he can use it? Or should you set limits? Okay. Or if you should just let him use it if he needs it for school. Because definitely in school now, if you don't have those gadgets, if you don't have a computer, if you don't have the internet, okay, you can make lots of your projects. Mm -hmm. So in setting limits, you know, we, mm -hmm. we control you properly. Set limits. Yeah, we set boundaries. Boundaries. Yes. yes. So we say, that it okay, no limit. computers, no laptops in the bedroom, all in the living room. Because then you can supervise. Because if they're in the bedroom Easy sometimes access, yes you know but if they're in then where everybody is mm -hmm. in the living room mm -hmm. you know ah 30 minutes is up sorry turn it off tomorrow is another day but if they're in their bedroom sometimes you're also busy distracted so they can go on and on and after a while it's out of control okay. and uh, <laughs> we will go back to that in a little while doctors yes. we have a facebook question how can we differentiate addiction from a habit can a habit lead to addiction Definitely. <laughs> so when, when uh, let's say a habit, let's define a habit. Let's first define a habit. It's something that you're... We do it, all, we do it over and over yeah. again. Regular basis. You're interested yeah. in... But others say that, you know, they keep shopping. It's a habit. Yes, but if your money for groceries, etc., is gone because your habit is shopping, your habit is doing this, going to the parlor, going to the spa, and there's no more money for tuition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for you know, insurance, for whatever the maintenance needs of the family. Mm. And that's an addiction already. Oh, already. So that there's habit a... <laughs> that you have formed oh, oh, will lead to an addiction, just like drugs, yes, um, sex, yes. and alcohol. Let's touch a little bit uh, on on these three. Uh, let's start with alcohol addiction. Oh, that's so sad. Okay, <laughs> alcohol addiction. Oh. Okay, we've seen a lot of uh, alcohol with people with alcohol addiction. First, you really have to evaluate why they do have this uh, alcohol addiction. There are many of them who are self-medicating with alcohol. So first you evaluate them. What's wrong with them? Is there a mood component of this problem? Are they depressed? Is this part of a syndrome of a mood problem, a bipolar disorder, where the addiction to alcohol is just part or one of the symptoms of the bipolarity? Mm -hmm. So you have to rule out all these psychiatric conditions. Okay. Is there anxiety? that he needs to self-medicate with alcohol. Yes, and then the clinical psychologist will ask, is your dad also prone to drinking when he has a problem, when he has stress? So it's a familial thing. It goes from generation to generation. Sometimes you find out the Lolo starts, is also an alcoholic, the father and now the son. So, genetic also. yes, yes, genetic. Oh, yes, that's yes, right, Dr. Lord. There's a very high oh, genetic high predisposition yes. for you alcoholism. Yes. You see it also, we, always, we were talking about, you see it in your family, the yes. healthy ties that you and have. And not only that, Angel, you see it, your, your dad is an alcoholic. Chances are unconsciously, when you get married, to an alcoholic because it's familiar. 
Mm -hmm. That's why it's the familiar. setup of your uh -huh. family. Because That's it's familiar. You know. So we have to be very, very careful. Because these things, it's already, the signs are there, but you know, sometimes you're in denial. Uh -huh. <laughs> Doctors you, will talk yeah. more about the signs, the symptoms, and the treatment of addiction when Med Talk returns. Did you know that Luxembourg has the highest number of alcohol consumption all over the world? Followed by France, Ireland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. Each resident in Luxembourg consumes 15.5 liters of beer every year. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about addiction. Before we uh, pause for a gap, we were talking about alcohol addiction. And you mentioned, Dr. Magno, that um, you see it in the family. If you're, yes. If you're one of the members of your family. I always ask, is addicted does your dad alcohol? also drink? How about your Lolo? The answer is always yes, yes, yes. So it's familiar. Mm -hmm. So it's something familiar, so they do it. And then, for example, if it's a couple's therapy, and the husband's drinking, you know, sometimes you just say, uh, and sometimes it's a cause for marriage breakup, because they become violent, mm -hmm. then they battered their wives, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And then, didn't you know that, I would ask, didn't you know that he had tendency to drink like your dad? And then the surprise, oh, yeah, I, and then it dawns on them. <laughs> it dawns on them. Yes, yes the signs uh -huh. were there, uh -huh. but since it was familiar, oh, Okay, now I get it. Mm. So yeah. there are red flags to watch yes, out for. You talk watch about out for alcohol. How about drug, oh, drug addiction? The oh. drugs also. Sometimes, you know, you, it's a, as we said, impulse control disorder. You know already that the father was prone to this, the Lolo was prone to this. Of course, sila, they imitate. Monkey see, monkey do. What about, for example, no one in the family has had an alcohol addiction, a sex addiction, drug addiction? but they have it in their system. Okay. okay. They do get exposed uh, early on to these substances. They are aware that there are substances, but when do they get into using it? Okay. During your adolescent stage, mm -hmm. that's when your hormones are raging and you would mm -hmm. want to experience all these things. Experiment. You'll experiment. Oh, yes. oh. It's out of curiosity that you started smoking. It's out of curiosity that you started drinking. But then, because your group, you, you've gotten into a group that uses these substances to a large extent, then you want, you would want to belong in this group, then you continue on yes. with their activities. The problem is there are people who didn't get out of that phase. Mm -hmm. They would continue mm -hmm. with it because they're not able to get to the next stage, developmental stage. What yes. is the next developmental stage for adolescents? It's young adulthood. But if you have a tumultuous adolescence, chances are you wouldn't resolve your issues during your adolescence, so your next stage would again be tumultuous. Mm -mm. So you're just continuing no, with whatever you have. And yes. we go back to the stage. attachment again. because either the parents were absent or they themselves are. Uh, stress, they themselves yes. are dysfunctional, mm -hmm. they themselves are, you know, problematic. Mm -hmm. Yes, they don't get the, the family support. Oh, they don't have the family support, so it right. just goes they on need. and on and on. So when does one need to get help? At what stage? <laughs> Sometimes when they reach bottom, <laughs> they even not not There are those mm -hmm. who would really, but you would allow them to oh. reach. Bottom, bottom, oh, rock oh. bottom. Hindi, ano, eh, hindi so this is allowed, like what you said, you allow yourself if to you feel have, this way. Oh, oh. Yes, if you have tried already mm -hmm. from the beginning, you've given a lot of intervention, nevertheless they don't cooperate mm -hmm. uh, and they would think they could stop it on their own, you let them reach rock bottom. And then when they reach bottom, kasi, ayana, it's either life or death. 
and then they choose mm -hmm. life and then they come. Which is mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh -huh. but the problem also there, Doctora, is um, families become codependent. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. It's like, okay, we advise them to undergo rehabilitation, but the family would, w would not want them to undergo this because you know, they, they think you know, that's oh, the, shame. The, the, shame. The, shame. the shame, the guilt. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And they also, um, you're right, no, Doctor, right? they, they feel the guilt of uh -oh. not being able to catch it early on uh -oh. or maybe mm -hmm. looking back at, at how the childhood uh -oh. was. Okay, it's nice because somehow when cases like that happen, the universe sends you a responsible person to say, hey, that's enough, I'm taking you to rehab. Mm -hmm. And you, ha you really have to come with me. Yes, you, you really, really have, have to come, come with me. me. We'll go back to that, Doctor, <laughs> in a while. We were talking about rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Facebook. If someone was already rehabilitated, is there a possibility the addiction will recur? Of like course. in <laughs> of course. drug addiction, of course. sex, alcohol, of shopping, of gambling? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. In and out of rehab. So why, uh -huh. why does this happen when one has already um, been to rehab? Because they, they miss that feeling, the sensation, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the good the good feelings that what the happens? drugs what happens brings. inside rehab that 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 um, can temper these addictions for for a while but okay. there are different oh. types of rehabilitation no? um the structured ones the very structured ones these are the the 10 uh, job steps or oh. the um, there are also the not so structured rehabs. These are the open rehabilitation. Oh, we ahead. also have an a uh, outpatient rehab, mm -hmm. but you have to choose which one you think would be effective for this patient. Mm -hmm. So before rehab, they have to see a psychiatrist first or a psychologist before. Is that the next step before rehab? Ideally, uh, yeah, ideally, yeah, that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. no, because you have to evaluate, you have to assess. Are there any other medical conditions that are contributing mm -hmm. to this addiction? Because there are many medical conditions that can contribute to this mm -hmm. one. Are there any psychiatric conditions comorbid with the addiction that's also triggering this addiction? Mm -hmm. So you have to evaluate all those things and address those things before you commit a patient to a rehabilitation. Is the rehab really the answer to your problem? If it is not, then what can we do? If yes. it's not rehab, doctor, are there medications? Are there no, for example, things if to do it's a, an addiction to gambling, I would always say you need to be tested. I need to find out what your resources are because I cannot guess. I can say it to you, and what you're saying might not be, you know, the real reason. So they come for testing, and then you find out your psychological resources nila manipis na manipis, and you can show them parang medical model mm -hmm. na you know creatinine, cholesterol. The numbers are there. Also for the psychological assessment they see so they said some I just said to somebody cognitively intellectually you're here emotionally you're here so we will do something so that it will be at par at least you know okay. yes. we have another question mm -hmm. from Twitter if I suspect that a family member is already suffering from substance addiction what should we do as a family to help him it's a very good question okay. very good question when there's a um, substance abuser or as um, addict in the family, you treat the patient as a member of a family, in the context of the family. Even if you put him on a rehab, there's still a family involvement. It, there's a very strong family involvement in the treatment. Even if he goes on pay, outpatient basis for treatment, you involve each member of the family. That's what we call supportive therapy. Mm -hmm. So that the family knows how to support the one who needs help. Oh, Do you recommend also that the family go with the uh, patient? Definitely. To therapy. Yes, there yes. really is. Oh, there yeah. really is. Oh, they oh, have the oh, partner. They have to be the one. <laughs> they have to be oh, the, the one. one yes. You can't have the because patient not, go by himself oh, or herself. Because if they're not accompanied, mm -hmm. <laughs> they have many excuses. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you have to remember that they're having these problems oh. probably uh, with the very high probability very that high probability. because this came from the, the family, family life conflict. or a dysfunctional family a dysfunctional life or something's family. happening. Also, the family should also acknowledge always, oh, yes. that always. It, it, it stems from that. Oh, oh. Uh, total support. 
How about uh, other groups aside from? Oh yes, friends, barkada, yeah, the family. Oh, nice. oh, oh. Mm. extended family tayo dito. Yes. So if they, if the father is abroad or the mother is abroad, the cousins or you know, ninang, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. oh, we'll mm -hmm. bring them so mm -hmm. that you know they know na me sasalo me su support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very important that they know someone is there oh, to yes. understand them, not yes. to judge them. Oh, because oh. they admit to and it somebody already. somebody who cares. Yes, or somebody it's most who important. cares. Oh, somebody who cares. We do also have some help, uh, self-help groups oh, oh. for this. Um, it is being run by former addicts, and um, it's good to be a part of it yes. because they identify with those people yeah. who access they counselors. They know what they this. Yes person is going through. Mm -hmm. so and if those are not available, nurse, 24-7. Oh, para di somebody to be there. Mm -hmm. Oh, they invest in somebody, yes. you know, hindi ba? Yes. Para At least someone talaga who oh, cares. Oh, who will take care. In Tagalog, oh, may malasakit oh, for, oh, for the individual. Ka, hindi ba kung uh -huh. mga nasa abroad at walang pamilya? At least mayroong ano, a special nurse. Mm -hmm. So addiction is curable. You can get treatment for it. And there's a lot of uh, help that can be extended to one who may be going oh, through this addiction. Just ask for help. Just ask for help. Thank you, you very much. You have to acknowledge it first. Mm -hmm. So ask it starts there from is a problem. Yes. the uh, individual oh, going through this oh, Because first. that means the person wants to get better. Or he knows he has reached bottom or she has reached bottom. There's no other way to go but to what? <laughs> but to seek help. <laughs> to seek help. <laughs> to seek help and get better. Oh, oh. And be a good role model and influence to others. Or die. When we don't want, oh, we don't want, want that. to extreme. get to that uh, that's extreme. situation oh, anymore. Kaya. Mm -hmm. So, doctors, that's that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for oh. helping us understand more about addiction, for helping, for helping us, us. Uh, Thank you. Uh, understand the, the process and, and how to catch it early yes. on. Again, yeah, we always need someone who cares to be there for of us course, to understand of us. Of course, of yes, course. Even a guardian angel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, doctor. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to thank our doctors for sharing their knowledge about addiction. Once again, thank you, Dr. Estrella Magno and Dr. Henwina Ranoy. See you again next Tuesday on MedTalk, 10 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation here on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Jacob. Good night.